Hello, and welcome to Crosswords, the show where biblical scholars argue fiercely over the solution to the New York Times puzzle. My name is Will, and I'm a songwriter. This is the last installment of my series on role-playing as a bard at the gaming table. We've discussed one particular way to do so that I believe to be fun and creatively challenging, which is covering pop songs by messing with the words to fit whatever narrative is happening at the gaming table. Now, I think that this is a wonderful way to play D&D but it's incredibly niche and it may not suit the majority of players. You may be new to improvisation or maybe you just don't feel comfortable putting yourself on the spot on a regular basis. Well, don't fear. This is not the only way to roleplay a bard. There's no one right way to play D&D or any RPG for that matter. A character's class does not define it. Instead, the choices you make help shape that character's arc. Or hell, maybe you're just doing a dungeon crawl and you don't even have any character traits in the first place. Sure, the bard class is based on a musician, but for completion's sake, let's try and break the bard class down to its basics and see if we can't figure out some non-musical ways to play a bard. The bard class in D&D 5e relies on two core stats, charisma and dexterity. It uses charisma to cast spells and dexterity if, God forbid, it has to make a weapon attack or play an instrument. But let's throw out the whole instrument thing for now and simply talk about these two stats. This blank slate character is probably good with people. Uh, either they're good at manipulating them or they're quite well liked by most everyone. Possibly both. An actor or a con man, James Bond without the guns, and without the guns. And with that dex, they probably have some sort of hand-eye coordinated skill. Uh, juggling, picking pockets, something like that. So this is someone that doesn't have a lot of meat on their bones, but they can convince you that they trained under Arnold. As quick with a blade as with their tongue. Uh, fast, fast talker. Or alternatively, a used car salesman who ran track in college. Let me run with this idea a bit further. This type of character sounds pretty out of place in your classic high fantasy setting. But swap the used cars with covered wagons and the college track scholarship with a messenger job in your youth, and you've nearly got yourself a character. However, we still haven't gotten to the core aspect of the bard class, the inspiration. The bard is primarily a support character, spending portions of or even their entire turn aiding their allies somehow. For the majority of this series, I've advocated singing silly songs as a way of role-playing this. No longer. Let's turn to our used car salesman. Let's call him Steve. How is Steve going to inspire his allies without a loot or a charm? Well, he's a salesman. He's going to sell the idea of his allies kicking butt. Look at Half Thor over there. Look at how big his calves are. Oh, you better watch out, my goblin friend. I wouldn't mess around with a guy whose calves are as big as your head. You should probably just give up. My god, Aria, your spellbook is just looking bigger and bigger every day. Have you been working out? These little goblins aren't going to be messing with us much longer with you around. You get the point. A bard doesn't have to have an instrument to inspire their allies. All they need is a little encouragement. Be supportive of your friends. That's not too hard. So let's go a bit further. What other non-bard bards might exist out there? Well, there are plenty of professions that rely on charisma. We could have a lawyer bard trying to convince the enemy that their tactics are illegitimate, shouting out objections as vicious mockeries or cutting words. We could have a teacher bard pointing out enemies' weak points to help their allies land hits and confusing their enemies with lengthy lectures on quantum physics. We could have an actor bard built for infiltration and deception. None of these backgrounds have anything to do with music, and yet I could see them working out as great assets to any team. A little word of encouragement to anyone who feels a little shy about playing a bard. Yes, there's definitely an aspect of stepping into the spotlight when you play something like this. However, RPGs tend to be a good way to experiment, learn, and make mistakes in a safe place among friends. And if you are shy, you may want to consider playing a bard as a first step toward shedding a fear of public speaking or as a way of getting used to that all eyes on me moment. Give it a shot. And if you don't like it, you can always roll up a barbarian next time. This is the end of my little series on the bard class. Hopefully some of you have found it entertaining or even useful. I started this series because I joined a company called Nerdsmith, and I didn't have any good ideas for a podcast. This was also a little experiment for me, since I wanted to try out making videos. I do know that this will be one of the last times you see my face on this channel. If I do make any more videos, they will be either on Nerdsmith's channel or on my personal YouTube account, links below, since any future videos I make will probably have nothing to do with Scanlan Short Haul or possibly even D&D. I want to thank Logan and Ange over at Nerdsmith for giving me the opportunity to do this. They built a company that is incredibly kind toward their artists, and I'm proud to be a part of that. If you're looking for a new podcast or nerdy entertainment in general, I highly recommend their network.
take a look at nerdsmith.org for more. And I want to thank you guys for letting me experiment with the style of creating. I know that it's not normally what this channel is for, but fear not. We'll return you to your regularly scheduled silly songs soon. Love, blessings, shits and giggles.